thank you so much for the opportunity to speak here today. Um, my name is Marta Munkelbus. Uh, my fascination with the archaeological houses uh, comes from an interest in what daily life looked like for what we would call in vision the common people. Um, so I have worked for 10 years as a professional archaeologist uh, doing excavations and surveys and uh, uh, I have had the pleasure of excavating several houses but usually uh, the restricted budget of uh, the of most excavations um, makes it uh, yeah the number of analyzes you can do on the houses is also very limited because of the budget so therefore the houses are often interpreted only on a superficial level uh, concentrating on the metrics, shape, and function of the houses. Uh, and we usually don't have the time to look into the buildings, um, to investigate the daily life and the social practice of the inhabitants. So, uh, for my PhD, um, I am analyzing houses that result from the regular cultural heritage management in central Norway. Uh, and I will investigate the potential to study social aspects and daily life on the basis of building, building remains. Uh, and what I'm um, most interested in is the household. So, um, yeah, we'll have a look at it. Um, so I have this research problem for today. Um, I've just started, or I've worked on the PhD for one year, so I'm not sure I will be able to answer this today, but finally, I hope. <laughs> so um, I want to use the opportunity today to demonstrate the material that relates to the period of AD 950 to 1150 and the methods that I'm going to use on the material. So um, for my PhD, I wish to explore whether society on a small scale um, reflects society on a larger, larger scale. Uh, and I'm fairly convinced that the people of early Trondheim uh, were deeply affected by the political, social, and religious changes that took place during the long 11th century. And that they consequently altered their lifestyle and thereby immediate surroundings in order to adapt to the changing trends and norms within society. Um, yeah. So today I will show you uh, some of the material from uh, early Trondheim uh, and also the methods that I'm planning to use uh, and some pre preliminary results that are re uh, related to the settlement of early Trondheim. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let me see. In the period of 1973 to 1985, there was a large excavation in Trondheim prior to the building of the public library. Uh, within the library site, uh, approximately 200 urban houses were found, and they were dispersed over 12 phases, from, uh, dating from uh, uh, circa AD 900 to AD 1600. There were more than a million finds. Uh, they, they were related to different phases. I will only look at the finds that are connected directly to the houses, otherwise. Uh, three years won't be enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this excavation is uh, interesting since it uncovered so many houses from an early urban context. This is the, one of the first cities in Norway. Uh, but it also uncovered lots and streets of the same city. So each face has a map like the one you can see on the right. Um, so four or five phases uh, of the excavation fall within the long 11th century. Um, although the starting date of the first phase is unclear, and also there is some um, assisted division between the first two phases. But, uh, most phases were dated by stratigraphy. Uh, they used uh, 14C dating for the first two phases. Uh, but also dendrochronology, uh, coins, pottery typology, 
and shoe typology was used to date the faces. So um, within this material, I will look at houses that are suited for a range of different uh, analyses uh, in order to gain insight into the activities and social practice within the households. So features inside and outside of the houses <coughs> will also be of importance and the finds and the samples related to the houses. There's a lot to read here. Um, so um, my analysis of the library's site uh, starts with a suitability assessment of the houses, as well as a classification. So <laughs> a lot of dreams here. The green, uh, that's category one houses. Uh, the suitability assessment is done in order to determine whether the houses are suited for the types of analysis that I want to perform. Um, and the houses are divided into different categories based on preservation level. So in category one, um, these houses are well preserved. Uh, it is possible to determine, determine building custom, shape, rooms, etc. Finds or samples can be related to the house and interior features are often present. Uh, and spatial analysis, such as access analysis, can be performed. Uh, the category two houses are not that well preserved, but enough remains to estimate the function of the house, its size and building custom. Uh, the houses normally lack evidence of uh, internal rooms and both internal and external door openings. So access analysis cannot be performed. And the category three houses are very fragmented, as you can see here, for instance, just a beam is left and the post. Uh, so it's not, it's not possible to interpret the shape of the house. Uh, and yeah, finds might not either be related to the house. No spatial analysis can be performed. So uh, the category three houses I consider as unsuited for most types of analysis, but they will be included in the project based on the information they do provide. I can say that there has been house there, at least. Uh, and also, at the same time, I classify the houses according to demographic context and period, building customs and functions. It's a very typical archaeological exercise. Um, and after that, I go over to the spatial analysis. Uh, the spatiality of buildings is an important factor to analyze in order to gain information on daily life in the households, since it is this space that people build and inhabit. Space can both separate and join, for instance, in the form of corridors and public or private rooms. Spatial analysis in archaeology may concern two things the study of artifact distribution on a site, or the study of architectural form and what it can reveal about the past or present societal structure. So in this project, I do two types of spatial analysis. This is the first type that I do, functional analysis or activity analysis. Um, it focuses on activity areas uh, or rooms, uh, as seen through the dispersion of finds and features, sample material, as you can see from the case here. I also uh, do uh, spatial ana uh, analysis of the layout of the house in the form of access analysis, um, which regards movement patterns, ac accessibility and control. Um, An access analysis is a method that was de developed by architects uh, Hillier and Hansen in the early 1980s uh, as an answer to how social aspects could be included in spatial analysis of buildings, settlements mm. and cities. So not only houses but larger environments. Uh, one, uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, by charting openings, passageways, activity areas and which parts of the household that are ready, readily available and which parts have restricted access. Uh, the method brings insight into how the houses were used. 
and attributes to articulate ideas about public and private space and restriction and flow of movement. So, uh, access analysis make it, makes it possible not only to chart physical conditions, but also uh, social aspects of the archaeological households, such as privacy, hierarchy, status. And uh, it produces models that you can compare. So, I only have one house here now. <laughs> uh, but I will have a range of different types by the end of the. Uh, of the of the PhD, <laughs> I hope. Um, so one hypothesis that I would uh, like to investigate is uh, whether privacy norms changed with the onset of Christianity. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the spatial analysis of the buildings is not uh, yet finished. So therefore, the preliminary findings concern the settlement in general, uh, and not the households per se. Uh, but um, 90, as you can see to the left, 92 buildings belong to the first two five phases, and uh, they gradually increase in number towards the fifth phase. Um, of the 92 houses uh, from phases one to five, that's behind. 19 uh, are in category one. It means that they are so well preserved that I can do all types of analysis on them. So only 19. Um, so I present the findings for the, the 19 houses here. This is a map of phase five. This is, this is not all of the 19 houses, but the ones that belong to the fifth phase. Uh, in total, uh, eight, bu uh, eight buildings are interpreted as dwellings. In phase five, there are three, the pink. Um, dwellings are found in all phases from phase two to five. Dwellings have one or two hearths, um, yeah, no, and normally more than one room. Four buildings in total are interpreted as sales booths within the city. That is the green one here. Uh, the sales booths start showing up in phase three, uh, AD 1025 to 1100. Normally, they only have one room and no hearth. Uh, but they are situated along the main street. You can see a wooden main street. Uh, and four buildings, no, sorry, <laughs> three of the remaining buildings are interpreted as back buildings, like storage rooms or sheds, they're blue. No, they're not blue. Yes, they're blue, <laughs> sorry. And four not interpreted. So I have also tried to look at activities related to the houses. And then uh, at the moment, I've only looked at the finds that are connected to each house. Um, so one might notice slight changes during this long 11th century. There are groups of finds here. Uh, present in all phases after phase one is dwelling and uh, crafts and maritime activities. They are there for every phase after phase one. In phase two, there's a significant change from the first phase. As you can see, first phase is fairly empty of activities but there are only four houses also. Uh, in phase three, you get um, trade is showing up within the finds. So only minor conclusions here. Um, this is my last pitch. Uh, these preliminary findings are concluded by the authors of the main publication from this uh, excavation. And they say, uh, the rate of development, land allocation, and the development of uh, special types of buildings linked to economic functions can be summarized accordingly. Until the middle of the 11th century, the development within the individual lots appears to be mainly determined by functions related to the private household. From the middle of the 
11th century, the development of a special type of sales booths started, which contained storage workshops and commercial stores. Uh, the finds that can be linked to the buildings are heterogeneous, uh, indicating that the buildings, besides having maintained economy functions, also have housing and household functions, meaning that uh, also the sales booths are interesting for my study of households. And finally, throughout the 12th century until AD 1150, this development progresses, partly by the establishment of sales booths on several plots, and partly by increasing the size of these booths. Uh, and it has been suggested that these sales booths were leased for a certain period of time to artisans and merchants. Yes, that was... Thank you.